Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great presentation again today and our EKG topic today is the right bundle branch block. Again, my name is Pramil Chariat and um, I'm a physician. I work as a program director, internal medicine residency program, transitional residency program, and also director of research. And I also <coughs> hold the assistant professorship from Akin School of Medicine. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is like look at any time, any topic, we need to know the epidemiology a little bit, right? We look at the prevalence of um, uh, right bundle branch block um, and then w the relationship with the age, uh, when you look at the right and left bundle branch block is, is very important. As we get older, we always risk a lot of diseases. We know that, right? What happened in this case is like when we get older, complications high when you have right bundle branch block. Always remember prevalence of um, 0.8 percent on the age by 50. So if it's 20 or 30 years old, if you don't have any structural heart disease, <clears throat> the complication, I mean the prevalence is kind of less, but if you get older, you're going to have like prevalence of 11.3 percent. Um, so just remember that. <clears throat> so let's look at the normal conduction pathway. We got SA node, signals coming to AV node, then is bundle, then going to right bundle, then left bundle branch, left anterior fascicle, left posterior fascicle, and then cover the ventricle, right? So in this uh, right bundle branch block, that's where the block is, right bundle branch, okay? Now, let's look at the causes of, um, you know, what causes the right bundle branch block. Anything to do with the structural heart disease can be a cause for right bundle branch block, like sudden increase in the right ventricular pressure, myocardial ischemia, coronary artery disease, infarction, inflammation, uh, ventricular hypertrophy, and all that. Now let's look at some iatrogenic causes. The most common <clears throat> is like anytime we do like a right heart catheterization, there's a transient right bundle branch block, okay? And then when you do have, when patients have cabbages also, you can find that. Any, I mean, in the children, <clears throat> most of the time they have this congenital heart disease and then you repair it and then you get this, um, especially surgical repair of tetralogy of phthalate and um, non-surgical reduction, so, I mean the septal reduction um, in the, uh, I mean by using with ethanol ablation can also cause us. Functional long proceeding RR interval followed by short cycle and ventricular tachycardia may mimic uh, right bundle branch block and hyperkalemia also. And then also if you look at the pseudo on the right bundle branch block, patient with uh, <clears throat> uncommon primary ventricular arrhythmia syndrome and Brugada syndrome, um, erythmogenic right ventricular hyper, um, I mean erythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Okay. Now, <clears throat> intraoperative studies and they looked at the right bundle branch block and it can say it can happen in three levels. Okay. First level is the proximal right bundle, which is the most common right bundle branch block. Remember, proximal right bundle is the most common site for right bundle branch block. The distal right bundle, which is the un unusual unless there has been transection of the moderate band during surgery, we talk about cabbage and the heart surgery, correct? And then the third one is the terminal right bundle, which may be produced by ventriculotomy or again, transatrial resection, okay? Now, the next thing, the most important thing on this slide is like, what is the EKG criteria for right bundle branch block, right? Main thing again, QR's duration has to be greater than 120 milliseconds uh, in adults, greater than or equal to, okay? And then you have this RSR pattern in lead one, RSR um, or in the lead one or lead V2, um, R or R deflection in usually wider in the initial R wave. In a minority of patient, wide and often notched R wave pattern may be seen in the lead V1 and V2. We will show you some slide later on. And the next criteria is like S wave, um, greater duration than R wave or greater than 40 milliseconds in lead one and V6 in the adults. The normal R peak time, <coughs> normal R peak time in leads V5 and V6, but greater than milliseconds in lead one associated with the R prime wave. <coughs> now we're going to show you an EKG showing right body branch block. You can see the QR, the first thing we have to look at the QRS duration is greater than 120 milliseconds. And then you have the RSR pattern in the anterior precordial lead, lead, lead V1 to V3. Then if you look at it closely, you can see the slurred S wave in lead one, AVL, and uh, pre, uh, lead V5 and six, okay? 
Now, when we talk about this um, RR um, patterns, we can see, so we have put some um, pictures on that. Various uh, right bundle branch morphology, you can see. Um, I mean, if you want to remember, you can say the M pattern, right? In lead V1, that's like one of the most important lead. And next thing is like what happens when you have somebody with the right bundle branch clock, uh, block and they can also have like myocardial infarction, right? What is the prognosis? Not very good, okay? First of all, let, let's look at some numbers. Right bundle branch block is also with three to 29% of the people with it, acute myocardial infarction, okay? It's also accompanied by left anterior fascicular block and important lesion usually in the again left uh, left anterior descending artery lad we already know lad lesion is bad right so anytime you see uh, somebody with mi and right bundle branch block uh, be very serious outcome is not very good if you look at the mortality can go up to like 36 to 61 percent okay so remember mi with the right bundle branch block doesn't look very good okay now, so we can look at this uh, MKG. Should it not interfere with the diagnosis of myocardial infarction? Because you know you can see the regular ST segment and all that. ECG so like uh, ST segment invasion lead to a three AVL with the reciprocal changes in lead one and AVL in Q wave in lead two VF. It also show in this thing here that right bundle branch with the RSR pattern in the right precordial lead V2, and then you have this ST segment elevation MI. Okay, two three AVL. Up, we talk about the right side of the infarction. I hope everybody knows that. Now, incomplete right branch, right bundle branch block. When do we call that? Right bundle branch arbitrarily said to be complete when there is a QRS duration greater than 120 millisecond. Okay, so if it is greater than 120 milliseconds, it's complete. But if it is incomplete, means the QRS duration is between 100 and 119. The complete right bundle branch block is difficult to distinguish from the normal variant when QRS duration is like less than um, 100 milliseconds. So let's look at some um, scientific studies like, uh, you know, the outcome. What happened to the prognosis on these people with the uh, right bundle branch block? <clears throat> the participants um, in this study, there's like they followed these women for a long time. They found out 832 women with the right bundle branch block. They followed up a 14 year period and they find out the hassle ratio is very significant. Uh, it's 1.62, okay? So um, over the left bundle branch was a significant prediction of all cause mortality. Uh, I'm sorry, not old. When you took about when you compare when you look at the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch block, of course, left bundle branch block has more mortality, a more um, chance of having a bad outcome. Remember that. Uh, prognosis. So, in prognosis, in patient with the right bundle is related largely to the type and severity of any concurrent underlying heart disease. Okay, long-term outcome is generally excellent in patient without apparent heart disease, but in the RBB, if you have underlying structural heart disease, you have to be worried. So what do I do? Like always, make sure the number one thing is, when you see a right bundle branch block, even if you're saying patient, it's probably a good idea to get an echocardiogram and see any structural defects going on, right? If it is older, you need to be very careful when they come with the symptoms. Again, um, uh, that mortality could be really high. Thank you very much for watching, and if you love this channel, Please click and subscribe. Thank you.